Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch and co-host Calderness. This episode uh, in 348 part two, we're going to be talking about the Future Foundation unboxing from Hero Clicks Italy, uh, as well as legacy cards and mission points, and talk about our top ten uh, figures we would like to have a legacy card. This is episode 348 part two. Howdy howdy, let's get rowdy. <laughs> Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and seal products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me, like always, in the studio is uh, the Billion Clicks Bruce, uh, heavyweight champion of Hero Clicks. Uh, Simeon, how is it going? It's not too bad. You know, I've been doing this thing called shorting GameStop. And uh, it hasn't gone well for me, but I think the tide's about to turn. So I think as soon as it drops below $3, I'll be in the clear. I'm pretty happy with that. It's only got like $299 left to go. It's not a lot for a stock. They drop $299 every day. Pretty pretty sure that that is fine. Everything's fine. I'm fine. Uh, I might have to sell one of my five yachts, but you know, times are tough for us. You'll, you'll recover though. You'll recover. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, like always, Dallas Street Hooks, we like to start off with what made us happy this week. Besides the weather, Simeon, uh, what made you happy this week, my man? Oh, besides the weather and the yachts, you say, uh, what made me happy uh, yeah. this week was I, uh, I've been playing some new games on Steam. So I've got a VR headset. It's uh, it's pretty cool. Um, turns out it can make you really motion sick uh, if you are playing certain games. So I've been playing uh, some like super hot, some Beat Saber, some stuff like that. I started playing one called Rise of Insanity, which is kind of like a jump scary Resident Evil, uh, Silent Hill kind of like whatever scare em up kind of game. Um, it's the first one that I've played in VR where you have to actually like move your character. The other ones you can kind of just like yeah. move in your small area and it like warps you to like wherever you need to be or it just uh, like you can just stay where you are. You don't have to like walk around. This one you actually have to like walk around as if you were in like a normal 2D like game, a non VR game. I don't know what they call those. Um, the old type oh, of games, uh, but yeah, this one's okay. this one's pretty bad. It it really between the jump scares, like constantly, like there's either like uh, like deep fog in the area, or like the lights are really dim, or like whatever. Between dealing with all of that, and then also your brain knowing that your body's moving without your body, mod- like your body moving, it gives you like this really nauseating. Uh, like seasickness kind of feeling it's like a horrible seasickness kind of thing like uh truly i don't i've never had actual seasickness on a boat but in this game when like i'm just like staring in the screen and like i can turn my head and stuff but my body's like moving around and like especially when you turn and like your body doesn't turn with the turn man it it's really hard to get through yeah and, like I want to say I'm halfway through it. Uh, I believe the man killed his wife and child, but I don't know exactly what the full story is yet. Uh, He's definitely insane because the name of the game is Rise of Insanity. Um, I'm glad I only paid $2 for it because I don't feel bad that I might just delete it without finishing it because it truly hurts my stomach. Yeah. Not in like a visceral kind of way, in like a... Yeah, just, like, super in, like, a nauseating, I can't, like, I can't just stand Ugh. still while my body, like, floats around kind of way. I guess it's good practice Man, for when I become a spirit in South of all. people, though. Oh, jeez. Calder will roll. All right. Uh, he'll well, roll, like, 20 Vlad years from now Calder. and be like, oh, that's a crit hit. And then I'll just, like, flip the dice and he'll be like, oh, the ghost yeah. of Simeon. And no one will know what he's talking about. 
He haunts me to this day. Yeah. Uh, all right. So when we have a speak really quick, we're almost going on. Uh, my bet, uh, my call is Cesaro. If you guys watched the last or listened to the last episode, you know uh, I got my call wrong. So hopefully Cesaro, uh, he deserves it. He deserves a win here, uh, in my opinion. If not, if Bobby Roode is in it, he'll be my second pick. But those are my top picks. Bobby Roode, I would like to win, but I think Cesaro deserves to win. Um, I don't really know who they're pushing right now, uh, who's in it. Uh, I honestly haven't been paying attention too closely. Uh, but we'll see. See what happens. Secret uh, what made me happy this week. 29, Fandango is going to win. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Uh, all right. Uh, what made me happy this week was uh, this last Saturday, so the 30th, was uh, a Midwest All Pro wrestling event. I decided I'd go. I'd help them set up the ring. You know, I'd take it apart, move it. You know, uh, build it, put it back together in the event center. Um, and then old Eugene, my coach uh, trainer, decided was like, "Hey, uh, you've refed a few practice matches, right?" I'm like, "Yeah, I have." He's like, um, "I was sort of this is a, a term we use in my family. I don't know how many people know, but uh, voluntold. It's when you're uh, sort of just." volunteered slash told you're going to do something at like sort of the same time. So uh, I was voluntold to be a referee for the first match, the last match and a match uh, somewhere in the middle before intermission. So uh, my referee experience involves uh, watching uh, wrestling matches and sort of knowing, I guess the ref's job, but you know, you don't really look at the ref, you know, and then, my other referee experience is the two <laughs> matches I refed for practice um, that are both tag matches. So first match, um, I don't know what to do. Uh, sort of just stand around, not be in their way, do the three count, um, sort of talk with the wrestlers beforehand, um, just so that way I'm aware. Yeah, you gotta, I don't like, want to break. You gotta case. wag your finger. Oh, I don't want to break their in the corner much. for too long. Um, yeah, yeah, I gotta sort of count. By the way. I now will. I know what it feels like to be like a referee at a kid's soccer game. I hate everybody <laughs> in that crowd. They are terrible people. Even I have been like, yo, ref, that's a three count, whatever. I was so like nervous and just sick of like, oh man, I'm in front of people. It's a live show. I don't want to make like an accidental call. Am I like, I turn into a heel ref without even like knowing, you know, like I'm just terrified. So, the crowd was not helping at all. They were doing my counts for me. They were going way too fast. They were making me go fast. Um, yeah, don't yell at the ref. Like They didn't know it was my first time ever doing a match ever. And I feel like even if they did, they wouldn't care. Um, but they'd never seen me before. Anyways, whatever. Uh, first match went all right. Uh, I was sort of like one of the ref like wrestlers was like knocked out or whatever. Not really. And I was like, he's on the ground. So I was like, oh, do I like pick him up? So like I, I helped him like walk out to the ring. And he like whispers to me and he was like, you're not going to ref any more of my matches, are you? And I was hurt. I was hurt a little bit oh, in that dang. moment. It cut, it cut deep that's, a bit. Yeah, that's um, real low. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the rest, I would like to say the rest of them went better. I don't know if they did. Um, I won't go too crazy into them. The next match, um, I almost did a fast count. I didn't notice he got his leg up uh, on the rope. Uh, I'm, I'm everybody's least favorite ref. I'm blind as can be, man. Like, I have 20-20 vision, but I cannot see. Um, so, like, I just I just did not see he got his legs up on the rope. Uh, I did. Don't worry, I didn't count him out of it. He got his arm up. I think he was helping me out, too. Um, that one was all right. And then in Tornado Tag, uh, they body slammed me. Um, and then I just sort of played dead outside the ring until I heard the bell yeah. and eventually slowly got up and walked Rips away. Are notoriously um, but yeah, I took a hundred times weaker than the like wrestlers. Like, yeah. They can only take I'm made out one of paper. Tenth the punishment that a wrestler can take. Exactly. 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 So yeah, it was a good, it was a fun experience. I learned a lot. Not, you know, I <laughs> didn't get the best words of wisdom or encouragement from some people. But then there was also other people that were like, hey, man, it looked like you did that like a million times. That was great, you know. So I'm excited. I can't wait to keep, you know, keep up the wrestling training and uh, still doing the ref stuff because it, it was it was fun. And, you know, it can only get better from here. Right. I can only ever learn more and get slightly better at it as we go. But being in charge of the, the opening match and the. uh and like main event match was just super stressful uh for myself so but i was glad i made it through to life 
And uh, that's what made me happy this week. So, yeah. Fair enough, yeah. Uh, good sip of water. Yeah, then we can move into, because we got a lot to talk about, guys. That's why you know we have a lot to talk about. We split it up into two shows. Let's talk about the news. Yeah, that's real nice of you, Simeon. Really appreciate it. Actually, I did a really cool baseball slide uh, when I'm a ref. Thank you very much. <laughs> Anyways. That's what I picture. Anyways. Go like, you got to so, go like out of your way to do like, <laughs> do some like cool moves while you're being a ref. Like, look at, look what I can do. Here's a front flip yeah. into so a pin count. They were all... <laughs> I can do a front flip. I could do that. If I just like not land on my feet, but land on like the side, sure, I could do that. Oh yeah, uh, that would be cool. Didn't do that though. Uh, over, anyways, I there you go, Sammy Zane on the Royal Rumble on purpose. So I'm like, I will land on my neck on purpose, and then I do, and then people oh, are like, oh man, are you okay? And I'm like, no, yeah. but on purpose. And they're just like, cool. goodness gracious, Sammy. very cool. Goodness freaking gracious. Uh, but all right, I thought I was gonna say something. Oh, yeah, yeah. All the matches are going to be on YouTube. So if there's any interest, you guys can personal message me or the page if you want to see the matches I ref. Uh, and you also want to be disappointed in my referee skills. Uh, eventually, I think they're going to be on YouTube, the Midwest All Pro YouTube channel. Uh, I know I'll definitely have to be like re watching them, see what I did wrong, and then I'll start like looking up more uh, stuff I should have been doing right. Uh, but yeah, anyways, let's go ahead and move on to the news. HeroClix Italia had an unboxing. They opened an entire case of the Future Foundation the day before. Uh, when you're listening to this, Scott Porter's series is probably already going on. But it was the day before Scott Porter got to open his one, uh, his two boosters. I mean, really, his like just two boosters that he opens on the first day. So they open an entire case. We yeah. already have an entire case of this set before Scott Porter. I mean, he's That's touched his product. Times. Before we keep- Ten times the more. boosters yeah. that Scotty P opens on a single day. So, I feel really bad. They just stole so much of Scott's thunder. I didn't realize, like, every time I hear about international stuff, I thought maybe they got the product, like, not as soon as we did. But we see a ton of previews from this Heroclix Italia, you know, Italy place. Yeah. So, like... And I'm I'm glad that they're the getting time stuff. We're... That's awesome. Uh, yeah. I did see... It is. No, it is. My my one tangent for this like discussion, I did see one person say like something about uh, the cards weren't in Italian; they were like in English. And I was like, "Well, yeah, yeah. HeroClix is. I think at this point they only make it in two languages, or maybe no, three languages. There's HeroClix English, which is what is dis- like developed or what is sent to the European countries and every, like, you know, the Americas and stuff. Uh, South America gets the, like, Spanish version. And then I think that there's a Chinese variation, but I don't remember if they actually get, like, the different cards or not. But, yeah, HeroClix cards, as far as I know, only come in, like, two or maybe three languages. So uh, kudos to these guys for knowing at least two languages in order to do this preview. God knows if they sent me Italian cards, I would never get through them. I'd be like, the whole bop it a boop it gazpacho. Honestly, if I would have, if I was doing screen caps and I realized these were all in Italian, I don't even know if I would have screen capped like half of like certain figures. I'm like, hey, the commons on commons, they do like whatever. Who knows, man? Here's what like the chase of the Who times. knows what the Super special air. powers are? Here's the dial. Yeah. Yeah, here's the day. Yeah, I'd at least do a picture of the dial. You know, like it's it's rough. Uh, but actually, before we get into this stuff, I'm talking about like some lame stuff we saw like earlier on an eBay post. Someone on eBay, some store got these that I didn't know of. Someone was trying to get them. Uh, it was a Miles Morales, Gwen, Stacy, Spider Gwen, and then a uh, uh, Iron Fist and Luke Cage duo figure. But they were yeah. like, they're. Obviously, old sculpts. The Miles is uh, the handstand Spidey. If you're from the superior foes of Spider-Man days, you know what handstand Spidey means. Um, He was pretty solid back in the day. Had a good super senses, uh, hypersonic click. This is like a repaint with the Miles Morales thing. The Iron Man Luke Cage is the same exact figure, as far as I can tell, like sculpt-wise, but has... uh, 
has uh, bystanders that come off, similar to the Miles and Gwen yeah. duo figure. Very uh, low, like short dial. Anyways, I don't want to talk too much about them. We have cool, way cooler stuff to talk about. So, um, but also there were some Plastic Man objects. I believe we saw a Plastic Man mailbox a while ago. I don't know if I'm just maybe making that up in my brain, but I thought we did see it, uh, or at least a sculpt for it. But this is a traffic cone, and then a oh, what else was the other one? It was Plastic Fire Man cone. traffic. Fire hydrant, yeah, that's what yeah. it was. Some like knock. So the traffic cone so, yeah. reduces speed within four, similar to like a dune buggy. It reduces speed within four squares by two. It's immobile and uh, indestructible, so it means you can't pick it up and throw it. You can't TK it. None of that kind of stuff. Um, I think you can still destroy it in some manner, but I can't remember the exact way that immovable and indestructible work together. And then the same with the fire hydrant. It also has immovable and indestructible, but it has a like force blast kind of thing. So once you place these objects, they are just stuck where they are. But these objects work more as like terrain than they do as like special objects. So you're not equipping these. They're more like terrain pieces that you use to help kind of like narrow down the battlefield. Like if you have like a lot of uh, little tunnel kind of like areas on your map you can like place these and kind of funnel people away from them or towards them or whatever uh maybe they don't care yeah. about what they're doing or maybe they don't like what they would do and they avoid them you know that kind of thing but yeah these aren't yeah. all right let's not talk about them like i said they kind of like suck let's not let's not talk about them too much let's get past this simian i like, like who them. the hell cares what these plastic man i'm ah, mad that, I'm mad that i didn't get to pick them up they were like a single <laughs> yeah, store they were like on a eBay sleeper. has them, which is yeah, weird. Sleeper eBay thing, it's it's so weird. weird. And you're all a, you're all uh, about LDC selling uh, yeah. thing. Uh, what store could that be? Uh, but yeah. All right, let's let's slow down their conspiracy theorist. Uh, so yeah, like I said, I had to go through and I got these screenshots. You guys are welcome, by the way. I haven't got a single thing of thanks yet. Haven't no, just you know, screenshot an entire case worth of figures. Made sure I didn't get any crazy doubles and stuff. Made sure I got some good screenshot. You're welcome. You're welcome. No need to thank me. I was I said, yeah, you should. Calder did that. Uh, yeah, I you was like setting this to sit. Please message time. me thanking me for being asleep while Calder did all the work. People are gonna do that and then not say anything to me like ever. So, anyways, yes, you guys are welcome. I was the, as far as I could tell, the only person. The only person on Facebook, at least, getting these screenshots. I saw no other posts of the full screenshots. Some people like went through and just got the chase or just got the legacy cards. I got every single figure uh, that he unboxed. You know, that wasn't like a duplicate. So yeah, you guys are welcome. You're welcome. All this right. wasn't a Scotty Porter unboxing where he like, you know, yeah, it wasn't easy. Left the card out. Easy. I can just like boom. The card is there for a long time. I screenshot the card. I double tap, skip forward ten seconds, screenshot the back. I have Scotty P stuff down to like I got it down pat. That's an easy system, Scott. No offense, um, you're predictable, bro. You're predictable. All right, it's super simple. This dude, boom, he's flipping cards left and right. I had to like pause, scroll back a little bit, try to get it. like he's just like boom, would flip it in like two like zero point one second. And you're like, bro, I can't even see the front of the card. What are you doing, bro? So number one, he had a good system for showing cards. He had two different cameras. He did a good job. I'm just saying he was super fast. Like I was super fast counting ref. He was super fast on flipping those freaking cards. It was hard. It was hard to understand. All right. So anyways, yeah, little thanks would be nice. Uh, anyways, uh, there's a ton of figures. He went through the entire fast forces. Uh, like we said, we went through two cases. So do we want to get into spoilers first and then go into legacy cards? We just want to get into uh, our top three picks and we'll try to make this relatively quick. Because just really quick to do a blatant, like a blanket statement here, we have a lot. Uh, we're seeing a lot of allies that go on the sideline. We are seeing the, uh, I don't know what run this is. It's like a bad artist who drew them. It's the Medusa, Ant-Man, uh, pink hair lady, she thing. It was a very uh, we're seeing that group of the style. Or so if you've if you haven't yeah, read that very weird. Uh, that set, it was a very pop art. Like I think it's like fifties. It's not based in the fifties, but like pop art became like real popular in like the fifties, like sixties kind of era. Yeah. It's very based off of that, like their poses and stuff. Um, 
but yeah, I think let's get into some spoilers of the figures and then we'll get into what I think is like the most interesting thing to come out of hero clicks and probably, I don't know. I'm willing to say the last 10 years is like the legacy cards. Um, possibly not interesting at all, but could be like game changing. Um, not necessarily like game changing in like a metal way, but game changing in a uh, your figures hold better value kind of way, which is more important, I believe. Ah, Matt Riddle's in the Royal Rumble. Very cool. Excited for that. Everything about that bunny guy, that bad bunny guy was absolutely awful. I hate everything about him. Uh, anyways, uh, Matt Riddle's kind of my guy. I really like, I like the original bro. Anyways, uh, I'm going to talk about Red Ghost really quick, guys. Um, I'm not like a Red Ghost stan. You know, I know a lot of people are excited. We haven't seen him since. I haven't seen him or the apes since Supernova, a set I'm very familiar with. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into Red Ghost. He does something really cool. He has, uh, first of all, I'll do his special power and go into his dial before I talk about his trait because his trait is just nutty. He's animal scientist. He's a rare in the set. He has a special speed power. It's phasing teleport stuff. He has that first first three clicks. Um, he's got eight movement with it. Ten attack, 17 defense the whole way through. Uh, sorry, 17 defense all the way through. Ten attack, top dial. The rest of it's nines. He's got two damage, one damage, eight speed the whole way through. He's got top dial perplex. He's 50 points. Only attack power he has is incapacity on his last click. So he's got stealth and super senses to protect him. He's got a little bit of perplex. The cool thing that he does is um, the bystanders print on this card are super apes. Free, once per game, generate all super ape bystanders. So he... This is... Normally people... This is half of crazy. the dice uh, and tokens pack of bystanders. Is, half of the dice and tokens pack are these apes. three super apes. Talked about the super apes before. One's you know an eleven for two. One's a ten for three with super strength. One's got TK. One's got shaping super senses. They're not amazing attackers, but at any point in time, he generates all three of them at once for free. It's not a power action. It's crazy. Uh, being able to do all three for free just seems a little nutty to me. <laughs> now, they're, since they're not the best bystanders, and once they die, they die. He's not crazy amazing, but I can totally see. Um, just a lot of stuff being used with this guy. Like he runs up carries. He could be used on some alpha flighty teams. I don't know. Like, yeah, it's very solid. Something uh, with like, some smart uh, object. Chase Odin, where you can get rid of power cosmic stop clicks, outwit something, and then uh, have. It's not necessarily that. not necessarily that. I don't. I just don't want to uh, give. I don't. I'm not saying it's like competitive, but I mean, he's, it's definitely like that kind of style where you can make yeah. like. Three you know who's a character attacks. that can make a that can make an attack after being carried, uh, and who actually won a maybe a state event, something actually important worth talking about? Uh, Captain America, Cap t- title Earth X Captain America. Wonder who won that state event? Oh yeah, that'd be me. Medusa. That was me. That was me. Title Captain America. Title Captain America. Anyways, is it Sam Cap. Uh, well, I mean, she was there also as well. I guess oh, uh, she was reason. also. Team. No, that's not the reason. It was mostly. <laughs> it was mostly... <laughs> yeah. All right, Red Ghost guys. I'm not going to talk about him too long. No, I I love bystanders. I love free bystander generation. What I love more is being able to generate them more than once. Uh, so that's like the one thing I don't really like about uh, Red Ghost, but still a really solid figure. Um, I'm going to talk about. The Rare Molecule Man. So, without bringing in, like, title Reed Richards and... What? Have- dude! Yeah. Sorry, Simeon. Yeah, so... Oh. Sim- no, dude, Kane! Kane is number 18? What the hell? That is so cool. <laughs> All right. That uh, is awesome. So without know. getting into how for, th- for 30 <laughs> points, you can bring in a Molecule Man that can, in your starting area... Uh, let title read Richards maker or uh, fixer of the universe title read Richards fixer of the universe. Um, you can let him with this molecule man, just delete your low point opponent characters, opposing characters um, without bringing up that too much. Uh, they brought a new unique molecule man for a hundred points or 30 points. He has the updated cosmic energy team ability um, for 100 points, he's got Sidestep for 4 clicks, Psychic Blast for 4 clicks, 
Uh, he goes invuln for his first two, and then toughness for his second two, outwit for his first two, uh, and then perplex for his second two. So that's for his first four. Uh, three damage for his top dial. And then for 30 points, he has three clicks of stealth. And this is, of course, from clicks five through seven on his lower dial. Uh, three clicks of stealth with seven speed. Three clicks of in-cap with an 11 and then two tens. Three clicks of barrier with an 18 and then two 17s. A click of outwit with one damage. And then two clicks of uh, perplex with one damage. So he's, for 30 points, he's very much a support character. For 100 points, he's very much a uh, triple target, eight range potentially psychic blast you for three damage character which isn't bad at all uh for either one he is unique he has one trait so he's got battle world other latveria cosmic and scientist keywords uh and then mm-hmm. for his one trait he's got molecular manipulation is this is the power that i i really like especially for 30 points so it's smoke cloud is free and then free roll a d6 and choose a number of non-debris terrain markers within range and up to the result. So if you roll a 2, a 3, a 7, whatever, uh, whatever you can roll on a d6, up to the result, within range, uh, replace those markers with any combination of hindering water and blocking terrain markers. At the beginning of your next turn, remove all markers placed this way. So basically... For 30 points, you can carry this Owen Reese up. You can carry him, TK him, move him, whatever. Any way that you get him to your opponent's area, let's say they've got like two Marvellas that are doing a double barrier, he can for free roll a D6, and as long as he doesn't roll a 1, he's going to be able to delete at least two of those terrain markers and replace them with, you know, water terrain, hindering terrain, um, water terrain doesn't minus anything from like a ranged combat attack, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, hindering terrain, if you have like flight or ignore it for charge or whatever, or you can just delete somebody's like smoke cloud or uh, not smoke cloud, but you can delete like other people's stuff and replace it with blocking if you're doing your own barrier. He's got a lot of like interesting little things that he can do, especially on the 30 point line where he's got his own barrier going on. I really like him. I think he's a solid, unique piece. I'm glad that he's unique. I think that two of them would be kind of nuts. You'd be able to delete way too much stuff from, like, the battlefield. But uh, as far as, like, an anti-barrier piece in a in a world where Marvella costs 15 points and has pseudo willpower now, um, I think Molecule Man is a good answer to that for sure. Yeah. Dude, I like him a lot. I still don't get his whole waving his purple stuff around, but he's a fun figure. I liked him a lot in Battle World. Not Battle World, excuse me. The original Secret Wars. He's really funny. Um, this figure shows that like he can be powerful if he wants to be, but really he's just like super incompetent. Yeah. You know, I think that reflects well on his dial. So yeah, yeah I'm really happy. His powers only work as well as his mind do, and his mind's usually gone. So yeah. Yep. Very true. Very true. All right, uh, moving on. I'm going to talk about the super rare uh, number 44, 54 in the set. Excuse me. Uh, the Silver Savage. Ooh. Uh, this guy's cool. I mean, it's Silver Surfer. It's awesome. So he's got a, tr- a special, not no traits on this guy. Ooh, very interesting. Uh, which is so a special attack power is steel energy with close range attacks. And then his special defense power is I will free all of you. Stop invincible. When this click is first revealed, Silver Savage can't be healed above this click this game. And after resolutions, remove an action token from all friendly characters and equip the Silver Savage with the uh, 004 uh, Silver Surfboard from outside the game. So, he comes with the surfboard, but he doesn't get it until his uh, his very last three clicks. The rest of his dial is, uh, is like this. It's very basic, uh, simple. He's got Charge Quake. He's got a full dial of Battle, uh, Battle Fury on, on his Savage clicks. He's only 100 points, which is awesome. He's got some Flurry and Impervious mixed in there. He never goes below an 11 attack value with a 12 uh, for his first two clicks and then a 12 attack uh, on his first click of him being the Silver Surfer again. He has eight range two bolts when he loses Battle Fury and he can finally make range combat attacks again. 
Uh, that's when he becomes a Silver Surfer on his last three clicks. What does the Surfboard do? So also on his last two clicks, that's when he gets his Steel Energy power. So he can constantly heal back up to his stop click. But he will not be able to, you know, obviously heal past it. And it doesn't matter, even if he could, because he only has Precision Strike when he's even on his stop click. So what does the Surfboard do? It is a heavy object. It gives him flight and hypersonic speed. When he kept character, uh, when equipped character without... Goodness gracious, golly gosh. When an equipped character without the cosmic keyword uses hypersonic speed, after resolutions roll a d6, I don't want it to give that character an action token. Hey, man, if you're not cosmic, you just don't get how to, how to surf. You don't know how to hang 10, baby. Uh, so one quick bummer about the Silver Surfer is that he does not have willpower at all. I, for the time being, he instead has the power cosmic team ability. So he will have willpower. He'll have a funky willpower. But yeah, so it's not, not power cosmic, excuse me, cosmic energy, even though this just totally cements to me, they're just totally getting rid of power cosmic because technically he should have the power cosmic team ability um, of all people, you know, him and Galactus for sure. So they're just, even if you would be power cosmic, everybody just gets cosmic energy. Yeah. You know, it wasn't for sure before this 100% cements it. But yeah, Silver Savage is cool for 100 points. He's got some good sticking around, stay ability. You know, he might be a little tough to get into the battle at first, only having charge right away, but I enjoy him. I like him a lot. Yeah, and I, I'm okay with the the cosmic power team ability or whatever the the new version is because, I mean, there's, there's characters in Marvel that aren't powered by Galactus, and there's characters in DC that aren't quintessent, so that like makes sense for them to have those abilities so it's it's fine for me i wish they hadn't done it as like cosmic power because there's some like deities and stuff that aren't necessarily cosmic that it makes sense for those characters to have so yeah. it'll be weird if like ares gets you know cosmic power when really ares is more like earthly power but it's like a, an extreme version of earthly power mm. All right, so another rare in the set, and this is a non-prime, 047A Diablo, uh, real name Esteban Corazon de Ablo. Diablo. Um, oh, like, sweet life. Yeah, like Cody. Diablo. Um, yeah, Esteban Corazon Diablo. My heart is Diablo. Uh, I don't know how that translates, but he has the Fantastic Four, Mystical, Past, and Scientist keywords. Pretty solid set of keywords, honestly. Um, I really like Past. I really like Mystical. Scientist is really easy to build with. And Fantastic Four, as you may have heard if you've listened to any of our earlier episodes, I really like Fantastic Four. This guy's 60 points, so he's got a lot of roles to fill in the Fantastic Four team, if you want. Um, so his first trait is the Council of Doom's expert on the mystic arts, which seems like a real blow to Doom. If you had said, like, the alchemical arts, I would have been okay with it. But the mystic arts, that's Doom's whole thing. He's got a lot of magic and mystics. And stuff like that. Like, I don't see Doom or Diablo coming in and being like, hey, Doom, I'm better at the mystic arts than you. And Doom being okay with that. But uh, apparently he's the mystical artist on Doom's council. Um, so this is the sideline active unique modifier. He has the ally thing. So for friendly captains and sidekicks, modify attack plus one when attacking one or more characters with the mystical keyword. Pretty solid. Uh, I said before, the allies are potentially a game-changing thing if there's enough of them that, like, basically you have your allies, like, you have nine sidelined allies, and then, like, every major team that you could possibly come against, you have a plus one attack. That's a pretty solid little thing. Uh, for 60 points, his actual dial, he starts off with three clicks of stealth, three clicks of sidestep, and then one click of stealth. He's seven clicks long. He has two clicks of a special attack power on an, uh, and then three, no, four clicks of a steel energy. Uh, he never goes below a 10, so he's an 11, three tens, another 11, and then two tens. Uh, is a 17 with willpower for his first two clicks, then an 18 super senses, 
and then he goes down to a 17 and then a 16 uh, for Super Senses throughout his dial. He starts with Outwit for his first two clicks, then goes to Perplex for two clicks, and then Prob for two clicks, and then he ends up back on Outwit for his last click on click seven. He has the Mystics team ability and the Fantastic Four team ability. Um, he has another trait, Alchemical Mastery. Diablo may start the game with the S001 Alchemical Potion equipped. That's a special object, the first in the set, so there's nothing below a rare for... for uh, Dude, that's so awesome. Oh my gosh. Christian is back. That's sick. He could like barely do anything last year, and now he's uh, entering the Royal Rumble. All right, sick, dude. I like Christian. All right, cool. Keep going. Last, Sorry, and whatever. On I'm sure whatever me and his is also just as cool um diablo man <laughs> uh so when diablo rolls for uh the alchemical potions effect you may choose any number up to the result minimum one so we should probably read what the alchemical potion does its effect is so it's got this wheel and starting at north neat. Cool. and going in Different. like a, a clockwise motion uh, so yeah. it has, it's, it's like a clock. There's, uh, I mean, sure. I there's mean, hands there's there. Not, there's not there's as clock. many, uh, numbers as a clock would have, but there's, there's enough. There's way more uh, hands than any clock would have though. <laughs> so starting at, at what 12 would be, uh, he's got regeneration. He's got the regeneration power. Uh, to the right of that is poison, then empower, then close combat expert, plasticity, Incapacitate, Enhancement, Exploit, Pulse Wave, Energy Explosion, Flurry, finally TK, and then back to Regeneration. So that's his little clock wheel. So the Alchemical Potion says, when equipped, place the Alchemical Potion in the, cir in the circle on the back of this card with the arrow indicator pointing towards the color of your choice. So when you first equip this object, you get to pick whatever power you want, which is pretty awesome. Uh, it's a 10-point object, so if played without Diablo, you get to place this anywhere on the wheel. You can have Flurry right off the bat. You can have Exploit right off the bat. Pulse Wave, maybe that's Quake, I don't know. Uh, energy Explosion, you can have whatever those powers you want. And then as a free action, you can roll a d6, turn the Alchemical Potion clockwise, a number of colors equal to the result. The character can use that power until your next turn. So as Diablo says, when he rolls for that effect, you may choose any number up to the result. So you can pick between one, like if you roll a six and you don't want to turn it six times, you can choose between one and three or one and four or whatever, whatever uh, power you want to stop on. And this is, of course, if you choose to activate that free to roll for it. So... Oh, it is Pulse Wave. Energy Explosion Pulse Wave. Yep. Pretty solid little power yeah. thing. Um, yeah. It's got for 10 points, yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, Diablo continues that special damage that he has on his first two clicks and his last click is Incapacitate Smoke Cloud. Smoke Cloud is a free action, but only to generate up to three smoke markers in adjacent squares. And on those clicks, he does have Stealth Cloud, so... Or stealth Cloud... He does have stealth with smoke cloud, so he would be in stealth. Um, he yeah, does have stealth cloud. <laughs> stealth cloud, the best power. Uh, he does have willpower on his first two clicks, so he can potentially, in the new Wonder Woman rules, remove action tokens from himself. Otherwise, he doesn't have any reducers. He only has ways to evade lower dial. But I just really like. Uh, I really like his potion. I really like the alchemical potion all the like varieties that it gives you. It's not just defense powers. There's only one defense power. There's a couple of uh, decent attack powers and a couple of decent damage powers. Um, there's a few that are like, I mean, he has both empower and enhancement on there. He's got both close combat expert, pulse wave, energy explosion. So it's not like he's like relegating himself to one kind of role. He's got a lot of different stuff, and he is six range, two lightning bolts. So, yeah, this might be one of my favorite uh, rares in the set for sure. Dude, absolutely. He's he's cool. Um, and you, you were excited for Diablo, even like before we knew what he did. You know, you were just like, good to get him into the game. I think was there. I think there was an older version, but it's good to have a carded version of Diablo in the game. You know. Yeah, like, especially with the, at uh, the very keywords that he has. 
and like the point cost. It's nice to have a figure that like you can actually point cost and not feel bad about playing it. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, the prime version of Diablo. Pretty cool here. So 47047B, who is also Esteban Corazon Diablo. Oh, I see it. I see how it's spelled now. That's funny. That's clever. <laughs> Massive people, mystical past and scientist. He has a trait, uh, alchemical mastery. I wish it would just be like alchemy chemicals. Alchemical sounds so funny to say. Uh, Diablo may start the game with S002 alchemical fire equipped. When he rolls for its effect, you may choose the number up to the result, minimum one. So this is uh, this is different. This is different than what Simeon has. This is the prime version, has different equipment, but also still has equipment, which is very interesting. Let's get into the dial really quickly. It's a very short dial. It's 35 points. It's five clicks of life. He is running shot energy explosion with a 12 attack, two damage, nine speed, and then he has a 17 defense with super senses. He's got, you know, six or seven or eight range or something. Uh, I, I My screenshot... Mr. Mr. Hero Clicks of Italy's thumb is covering the range value, it's, but he's got uh, two bolts. Five. All right, solid. He's got running shot for his first three clicks, sidestep on his last two. He has uh, no indom. Not that that's going to matter here in a few months. And then he has willpower on his last three clicks of life. Energy explosion the whole time. This dude's all about fire. He's all about fire. Old dial energy explosion. His freaking weapon wheel of whatever for his equipment card is a freaking crosshair. Yeah. He's all about fire. This, this is Diablo just pulls out a gun and shoots people. Old school. Uh, anyways. Yeah. It's very uh, classic. So uh, he starts the game. There's basically just four quadrants of this thing, as opposed to the all the different like powers. The crosshair is very much, there's just four different things this guy can do. So it's each is whenever he hits with an attack. So it's free roll D6. Turn the alchemical file left or right. The number of effects equal to half the result. So until you roll again, attacks made by the equipped character have the listed effect. So every time this person makes an attack, uh, one of this damage dealt is penetrating. Super simple, easy way. So really quick. The object costs 10 points. So for 10 points, you can give someone a full dial of whatever damage dealt penetrating, and it's free to roll, so you can just leave it on these bad boys if you want to. Yeah. Um, another one is after resolutions, you may deal one damage to each character adjacent to a hit target. Uh, super awesome with his energy explosion just to get another one damage there. It's no penetrating or anything, but it's just a solid way to get damage. Uh, one is give a hit character a fire token. Oh, baby. He does not come with any clicks effects, sadly, but he does hand out fire tokens. Being of your turn, uh, deal that character one penetrating damage, and then it says remove that token. Uh, this other one is sort of cut out. I tried to get it. Maybe he holds it up. Maybe I... Oh, Cesaro at number 28. Dude, Cesaro's coming in so late. He's got to win. Come on. <laughs> Cesaro at 28. Come on. I will say... Although... Uh, the give us 28 pick, character a fire token. Was Alexis they, also uh, 28? I might be wrong. That would she, suck if she, she was, was also 28. Uh, she was eliminated quick. was eliminated right away. fire Not token too. until they clear action tokens. So... Uh, uh, thank you. If like you give it to them and they have no action tokens, they have to take an action... And then they'll take damage, and then they have to clear that action token before they can remove the fire token as well. Um, so he might be a pretty solid character to go against that new Wonder Woman set where uh, there's not going to be any invincible in it. So no reducing penetrating damage. That's true. That's true. Uh, and then if you can see the bottom of the card on this other one, uh, until your next turn, hit characters, modify, I assume their combat value is negative one or something like that. You yeah, tell me, it's just, Simeon, a, just attack see, see by minus two. Attack, all right. It's minus attack two, by very minus cool, two. actually. So, so it's, yeah. it's not nothing. It's definitely something. Um, I'd most usually use a character like this to deal damage. Uh, while he is only 35 yeah. points and it starts with a 12 attack, minusing a combat value by minus two is pretty solid. Um, like if you're going against God Emperor two or had something... That's pretty uh, solid to himself. drop there. Like anyone with invincible, if you're not dealing penetrating damage, if you drop their attack value by two yeah. instead, pretty awesome. Right. So it it gives you some solid options, which I really enjoy. And then yeah, like why not penetrating energy explosion, baby? Back to penetrating energy explosion. I'm all for it. Yo, if this is like the fiend as Royal Rumble, oh never mind. It's Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins sucks. Donkey nuts. Uh, I hate <laughs> that guy. Anyways. 
Uh, let's just keep going. I hope he gets eliminated like right away. Seth Rollins is the worst. I, I actually went through and re pre ordered, not re pre ordered, but like pre ordered more WWE figures. At the first time, I only pre ordered figures where I was like, look, these are characters I characters, well, people I just actually care about, wrestlers I care about. Um, my second time through, I pre ordered everybody uh, but Seth Rollins and uh, who else was it? Um, it was some guy we already had a bunch of. Oh, Mankind. We already have like two Mankinds. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't need Mankind. Um, I even pre-ordered Shawn Michaels. And I'm like, I don't know if they can make Shawn Michaels better, you know? No, uh, I, but I, I still... can't imagine a better Shawn Michaels than the tuning up yeah. the band one. But yeah. I mean, hopefully. But even after all that, I still couldn't bring myself to uh, pre-order Goofy Foot Stomp Seth Rollins. He's just the worst. And if he ends up being like the Eddie Guerrero of this set where it's like, you know, they're not like that amazing, but like clearly this one's probably one of the best. Um <laughs> Uh, sure, egg on my face, but I'll still never buy Seth Rollins. He sucks. He's the worst. I hate him. <laughs> All right, cool. That's my Diablo. <laughs> Simeon, you want to round us off? Yeah. With the very last thing you want to talk wanna about. Do, I want to do a few shout outs. So we got a Pybok. He's a uh, one of the scrolls. I'll say he's a super scroll uh, variation at the very least. Um, so he's got the, the augmented with powers of Earth's most gifted heroes trait. Um, no, it's an attack power, but same thing. Um, we have a version of pretty much every Fantastic Four character as a scroll, so they don't have the Fantastic Four keyword. Instead, they have scrolls, and they have the scroll team ability, which, in my opinion, is better. Uh, after Wonder Woman drops and the rules are changed, they'll be even more amazing with their low point cost and lack of willpower currently. Uh, we got a high evolutionary with the Isotope E that for 15 points lets you swap a sidelined character for a uh, main force character as long as they share point value so that'll be easily abused pretty silly um you can also add that to your team with a high evolutionary for only 30 points so then you have a character and a object for only uh 30 points uh otherwise it's just 50 points i'll also say herbie is really cool um he does a mission points thing with uh, the sidekicks where if you have a character with the sidekick little tangent keyword thingamajigger above the character symbol, um, on a four through six, they don't get KO'd. Instead, you get two mission points with Herbie, and that for 30 points, you don't even need the plus five point trait that he has. For 30 points, if you're playing a sidekick character uh, kind of team-up thing, with Fantastic Four, uh, Herbie's going to be a necessary play. And that'll lead me into, I don't want to go through too many of the characters, but uh, that'll lead me into the title character, Susan Richards here. And uh, it's not actually Susan Richards. I don't know why I said that. It's, uh, let's see here. Oh, crap. It's Cesaro in the ring oh that sucks dang hero clicks podcast i wasn't even paying attention to the royal rumble what in the world what's going on here it looks like it's uh matt riddle uh edge and christian and daniel bryan are still in the ring right now uh you know i'd be cool with edge or christian winning uh matt riddle's probably my favorite i think i said matt riddle as my secondary pick i'd want matt riddle uh to win yeah cesaro's not here stupid braun Strowman. Are you old enough Who to remember the sure. Edge Christian feud? Like pre feud and uh, then... probably not. So yeah, like at one point so they were tag team partners for a really long time. At one point Christian was like Yeah. yeah, yeah. Our mom got into an accident and then Edge is like, Oh no and then they run off to like go see their mom in the hospital and Edge is like, Where is she? And Edge is or yeah, Edge is like the only accident was 25 years ago when she gave birth oh to God. you and he like beats edge oh up with gosh. a chair and then it led into their oh my feud. gosh that's awesome. pretty solid stuff pretty funny uh anyhow Before this that. is uh yeah. susan queen of atlantis so we didn't get a amazing look at the card but we did get a look at the card so susan queen of atlantis starts with two plot points. all right so rude <laughs> Starts with two plot points, six range, one lightning bolt. The most important part of this character is the mission points. So I mentioned it a little bit with Herbie. He also has this 
printed on the back of his card. Um, this yeah, game yeah, ends. This card. I don't know what you're talking about. I can tell everything. <laughs> this game oh, the mission ends points thing. Yeah, it's a little hard. Well, just read the Herbie. Any action. Read the Herbie mission point. That's the same darn thing, Jimmy. In. <laughs> After the end of any action, when a player uh, achieves 20, 20 mission points uh, from any source, if the game ends this way, the winner is determined by the power or by the points with the or with the most mission points. So you determine the winner by the most mission points if the game ends with 20 mission points. So maybe it'll be like a Harry Potter golden snitch kind of thing where you can end the game with mission points, but not necessarily have the most somehow. I don't know. Uh, currently this will be the only way to end the game with mission points is by having fantastic four characters. Currently they're the only ones with them. Um, but Susan, uh, queen of Atlantis when she is KO'd, this might be the best KO effect I've ever seen to have on my force. Characters with the opposing force gain the dolphin symbol for the rest of the game. That's super solid. I do not care if you gain the the dolphin symbol. Uh, it may give you a plus one defense with like some of her powers, but most of the time on most maps, I do not care if I give you your entire team the dolphin symbol. Uh, so her plus one is... Uh, these people are under my protection. So, free generate two water terrain markers in Susan, Queen of the Atlantis Square and or adjacent squares. Until your next turn, friendly characters occupying water terrain markers modify defense plus one, and each time a friendly character occupying a water terrain marker is missed by an attack, heal that character or Susan, Queen of Atlantis, one click. Pretty solid little power. Mostly a defensive power. It's hard to make an attack with that, but it's possible. Uh, she does have six range, so it's possible to like shoot somebody and also do this while gaining like you know the defense and whatever stuff. Uh, she has a minus X power, the ocean's terrifying force. Free generate X water terrain markers in Susan, Queen of Atlantis's square and or adjacent squares, where X is the number of plot points spent for this action. If one or more plot points was spent for this action this turn, when a friendly character that has the dolphin symbol or the Atlantis keyword occupies water terrain, uh, or the Atlantis keyword occupying water terrain hits, gain one plot point. So this would be really good with a dolphin swarm where you can generate a bunch of water and then all the water that they're in if they're... If they all manage to make a attack that hits, you gain plot points. It'd be a great way to gain pop, plot points. Blah, blah, blah. Um, and as as long as you like have plot points to start with, which you start with two, you can generate two of these at the beginning. Uh, you can generate a few water terrain markers with her plus one, and then she has the Storm Atlantis, which is a minus two plot point of power. Uh, she does start with two, but you don't want to use it right away. So this is free. Gain one mission plot point for each water terrain marker generated by Susan, Queen of Atlantis, that is in a square closer to an opponent's starting area than your own. So this is a way to actually win the game without actually uh, making any attacks, potentially. So in theory you could move all the way up to like your opponent's or your opponent's half of the starting area. You don't have to actually be in their starting area, but they're half of the field. You could barrier in, make a bunch of water train markers, potentially keep pumping out these minus two gain one mission points for each water terrain marker. So that's you know minimum probably I mean her free plus one is two. So if you do that enough times, then you're generating like four or five I mean well no it's multiples of two so you're generating you know yeah. up to eight and Stolen then you only dash. need 20 to end the game so it's pretty solid uh, she starts yeah. with her entire tile is sidestep crazy she's so good That's it then, right? silver powers yeah, yeah. yeah boy alright Edge did it Edge won the Royal Rumble alright very cool I'm excited did he spear uh, Christian WM. Uh, <laughs> not Spear Christian. So I thought originally it was end up gonna just be just Edge, just uh, Christian or something. 
Um, but it ended up being uh, Edge and Christian got uh, Braun Strowman out of it at the same time. Good teamwork makes the dream work. And then, uh, once again, worst human being on the planet. I hate him so much. Seth Rollins uh, pushed uh, Christian over it. And then Edge got right back in. Got rid of Seth Rollins. Apparently, I missed. I mean, Randy Orton was like on the side somewhere, somewhere else. I have no idea. But he came back, uh, tried to RKO, or maybe he did RKO Edge. I don't know. I was, I was in the heat of the moment. But uh, either way, Edge uh, got Randy Orton out of there. Hmm. Edge started this thing, man. Good I'm impressed. Crazy impressed. This is great. The Edge-Randy Orton feud is pretty solid. I, I will say the Edge-Randy Orton it's feud good. is better than the Edge-John Cena feud, even though they made yeah. the Edge-John Cena feud like out to be way better than it was. Um, but, yeah, as long as you get 20 mission points – the game ends. Uh, it's very possible with this title character to do that with a p- correctly built team. Uh, all your opponent has to do is KO this character, and then you lose that. <coughs> <coughs> you lose that ability. Uh, but once you lose that ability, uh, you have like figures like Herbie and other things that can potentially still win you it win you the game with mission points and so I think that it's an actual threat as far as uh, as far as game ending effects go I think mission points might actually change the game a little bit with this set there might be other figures that do it but her dial she's got six range one lightning bolt her entire dial is sidestep eight speed most of her dial and seven speed for his, her last three clicks seven clicks long She's got TK for her first two clicks, Invuln for her first two clicks, and Leadership for her first two clicks with an 11, 10, 18, 18, and then two clicks of three damage. She does have the Indom symbol, not that old Maddler in a few months. Uh, she's got Incap for clicks three through five, so that's a 10 attack Incap. She's got Barrier for clicks three through five, which is an 18, and then uh, Empower for clicks five through or three through five with three damage. So helping out your close combat attackers there. And then on clicks six and seven, still with that sidestep, she gets precision strike with 10 attack, 19 defense with defend, and then two clicks of two damage with outwit. So really solid piece. I'm not going to say it's the, uh, the best figure the best title character figure. I will say that it's got a really solid KO effect that like doesn't really hurt your team. And the, if you build your team to be a, uh, if you build your team to be a mission points kind of win team, I think this figure could easily bump you up. I'm not, I'm not going to say like it'll win the game for you, but with a correctly built Atlantis kind of team and enough barrier and yeah. stuff, this figure will bring you close enough to the mission points that like Herbie might solidify it. If there's a couple other mission okay. point characters, you can have other. Well, yeah, yeah. If there's a couple other That'll ones that give you those points, it'll be pretty easy to solidify a win with that team up. All right, cool. Well. Uh, I'm tired of talking about Fantastic Four Invisible Woman, so let's go ahead and move on and talk about the Fantastic Four's Invisible Woman. Uh, Something coming in with this set, which I am the most excited about here, are legacy cards. So just reading straight up what we know, uh, we see it when he shows his brick to the crowd while it's still sealed. Uh, There is a legacy card pack, a blind pack, that says legacy card 2002 to 2020, despite the fact this set... Um, so I'm guessing the figures will be from that era, from 2002 to 2020, which is interesting. I guess it'll add slightly more life to characters that came out in 2020. I don't know, not but I think the resale. card came out. Um, not yeah. So product not for resale. You're supposed to leave it with the bricks. Whatever your venue decides to do when they crack open bricks, you know, and sell the boosters. Yeah, who knows? Um, I like the idea of it being prizing. I think that's the best way to do it for sure. Uh, obviously, a lot of people can't have whatever events right now. So this is a very odd, strange time where things just aren't working out super well. Anyways, 
So what is a legacy card? Uh, this is on the back of the card, and let me read it to you. A uh, legacy card corresponds with a Heroclix figure from a past Heroclix set release. If played using the legacy card, a legacy card character is considered modern legal with the same set whose symbol is shown on the legacy card. If a legacy card for a character has different points and or combat values slash symbols than the dial for the figure, they use the points and combat values shown on the legacy card instead. So this is what we know, though. Like the legacy card, sorry, not the legacy card, but cards always trump the dial and the dial face. WizKids said that when we had the weird printing errors on the dials and everything. They always say, hey, look, the cards trump everything. If he's got Indom on the card and it's not on the, you know, dial, he's got Indom. All right. AI was so the big. This makes sense. The big, like, definitive thing for that because prior to, like, 2017, I mean, prior to, like, I guess it was 2016 when Superior Foes, we didn't have the dial info. Um, but once the dial info was on the card, they said, like, hey, the, the card is the definitive version of what the character is supposed to be. So if you see something different on the dial, then I could just refer to the card as the be all end all kind of thing. Yeah. So it's, so that's how legacy cards work. The two legacy cards we have, uh, one is invisible woman from the captain America set from 2011. It is also a foil card. It's shiny. It has the Captain America set symbol uh, on it, which is really cool. Someone's like, why does it have to be foil? Bro, foil cards are freaking cool. I love that Heroclix has foil card packs now. So I love this whole idea, by the way, guys. Uh, this doesn't mean that WizKids walks on water. Um, I'm just saying they had a really good idea. Uh, number one, it cost them nothing. Like, whatever it costs them to produce a card, I imagine, is literally so little. So freaking little. So it costs them, like, basically nothing to make these cards. And then they then they stimulate the old economy where it's like, hey, look, if you have this old figure, you can play it with this new card. Now, look, this chick, this version of Invisible Woman, she's not amazing. Uh, she was overcosted then and very wonky to use. She's overcosted now. Yeah. Um, although it does buff her a little bit so one trait would give her plus three range plus two range on the old figure it gives her plus three now she now also has a marvel's first family trait so it's adding a trait to it i'm not going to get into her dial it doesn't really matter she's still kind of bad um but it's the invisible barrier one so it's a cool sculpt she's a super rare figure it says legacy where it would say sidekick or secret identity in her card i think she has the same keyword avengers fantastic four lady liberator celebrity scientist let me check Yes, uh, she has the exact same keywords, except she actually gets a scientist as well. So this is awesome for a multitude of reasons. Number one, uh, so actually, let's talk about a really funny thing. The uh, the morgue card uh, is also a holographic card. I assume all of these will be. But the set symbol that's holographic on the morgue card is also the Captain America shield, which yeah, is very strange. He's not from uh, Even though he's from the Guardians. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's super weird. So like his set symbol is like uh geez, I don't even know what Galactic Guardians is. Is it 2012? It's just GG. 2011 maybe. It is. Oh, GG. Yeah, it should say yeah, GG or whatever. And it's the it's Galactic Apple Guardians set. Uh well I guess uh Guardians of the Oh, it's Galaxy like this big was G Galactic Good Guardians was the Starburst. Yeah. So, anyways, that's super weird. He he gets some new stuff too. Uh in the Invisible Girl dial, I didn't notice any obvious stat bumps. But here's what's cool about legacy cards. So number one, here's what we don't know. I already told you guys everything. What we don't know is uh, how many different sets or how many different characters are going to be in these legacy cards. Obviously, no DC. It's a Marvel set, I assume. Um, right. It'd be weird to start crossing stuff now. So it's probably all going to be Marvel. It's all probably going to be somewhat Fantastic Four related. Um, I don't know much about Morg, but he is a Herald, so he's probably a Herald of Galactus. There's some Fantastic Four, Silver Surfer, whatever stuff probably going on there. You know, I don't know much about it, but it's it's one per brick. So when you order a brick, it'll be sealed in the top of your brick, and you'll get one card in there. He opens two because he has a case, and he just opens them right away, which is cool. We don't know how many of these legacy cards are going to be there, like are going to be inside of the set. Although it does make me really excited, not for these legacy cards, if they're all going to be Fantastic Four or whatever related, but for future potential legacy cards, which means a figure just like this case, a figure that's 10 years old, Invisible Woman from Captain America can now be modern legal. 
Now, she's not amazing. Um, and depending on how many they make. So I think it should be around maybe 20 of these should be in existence for right now. If they do this with every single set going forward, um, there's still tons of Heroclix figures there are, you know, that they can do legacy of. So I think that's honestly fine. As long as they keep it to like 10 or 20 or a small amount, you're only getting one per brick. It's not like the four ish per brick that you would get with team up cards. And they had like a ridiculous number, like 120 or 60, you know, but if there is a legacy card of like Jakeem Thunder, Zombie Super Scroll, um, Bizarro Green Arrow, Copycat, um, probably not going to be Felix Faust, but Felix Faust. Now, if there are characters that were meta then that are still absolutely uh, meta now, those team, those, sorry, not team up, legacy cards will be bonkers expensive on the yeah. secondary market. They will be, I mean, they'll be crazy, right? I mean, Especially like you said, uh, get better. Assuming there's like one through 20. Because here we have a super rare from Captain America and a rare from Galactic Guardians. It's hard to tell with just these two what the scope of what they're like shooting at is going to be. Um, clearly, they're not going to redo a full set. There's not going to be any like shield specialist or Hydra agent uh, legacy card. Um, I would imagine they're not going to like waste a card on that. They're not going to make a common adaptoid into a modern figure with a card that kind of thing uh it'll probably be be like a rare and higher rarity kind of like thing but i mean from 2002 to 2020 they have a ton of sets to look through so if in this one set they choose to do more than one set and they choose to pull from both rare and super rares i mean you could potentially be looking at you know upwards of like 60 to 120 legacy cards in just this single set, which would be ridiculous, but it'd be possible. Um, I think more likely we're probably going to be like a couple handpicked figures, uh, just ones that they like think really shine or could really right. use like an update kind of thing. I don't know. All right, Simeon, right now for Fantastic Four, you know the parameters. You have two figures to base it off of, a Herald and a member of the Fantastic Four. You can go from Infinity Challenge to whatever 2020 set, you know, uh, whatever, Superior Foes Spider-Man or uh, freaking frick. Spider-Man and Venom Absolute Carnage. I can never say that. Anyways, <laughs> who's your pick? Who's your top pick? Locking it in. And don't say Human Torch from Captain America, you loser. That's probably almost a given. Who's your t who's your top pick for getting a legacy card in this set, or who you, who do you really want? No, no, no. Who's your top pick? Who are you going to guess? Make a um, call. Make a call. If I have to do a top pick, I have like a catch. I have like a, a catch five kind of top pick. Is that okay? Uh, it's kind of cringe, but go for it. That'd be the the Phoenix Force chases from Wolverine in the X Men. Uh, okay, we're talking a Fantastic Four set, Simeon. Oh. Okay. Not what you want? You need. I want you to guess what you think will be in it. That was. I mean, it's an act of bro, bro. Um, from uh, the chaos. Just, I'm not war. saying like what you want. I'm saying yeah, what would work for this set? <laughs> Something Goodness that would gracious. make We're sense. We're gonna get into in what we set. want later because uh, Fantastic Four, Fantastic Four, and and humans are pretty, pretty like copa copacetic or whatever. Uh, so from Chaos War, Lockjaw and Hairball peanut base figure would make a lot of sense to have a legacy card. Um, you know, they've got animal and human pet Avengers. They've got the, uh, my name is hairball trait. When lock John hairball attacks, they may choose to knock back a hit character Two squares after actions resolve. They've got a lot of stuff going for them. Uh, 13, 13 speed phasing top dial with the, the old school carry ability. Pretty solid. Uh, yeah, I, th I think that's a solid figure that could be updated with a legacy card. Maybe not, but that'd definitely be a hope for me. Okay. Uh, my, so I'm going to, I'm going to write you down. I'm going to see how well this goes. You're going to say lockjaw hairball. Terrible pick, by the way. Um, <laughs> I'm going to guess. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Man. Uh, I'm going to guess veteran fire lord. From Infinity Challenge. Oh wow! Yeah, they give him. They, I'm gonna say they give him a card, and uh, they give like him a trait. After they actions cool. of being carried, he can make an action like Sam Cap or yes. something. 
Yes, dude. Give him something where he like where you used to work, like what people used him for. So give him a trait like that. Uh please. I'm gonna please, say kids, please. It'd be hilarious. It would be awesome. I'm gonna top I'm gonna I'm gonna toss out a uh a repoint costed uh okay, Captain so America super character. rare squirrel girl. Okay. For instead of fifty nine points, she's either uh, fifty or sixty. And if she's sixty, she better have some updated stats and stuff. But uh, that's the good old three D base pop off the monkey Joe bystander squirrel girl. Um, of, all right, uh, here secondary... HC Realms monkey Joe fame. Oh, that's right, dude. Monkey Joe would love that. He would. I bet he would lose his mind. Monkey Joe, I know you don't listen to this podcast, but you would lose your mind. I mean, you would have to have lose your mind. You're probably. He's got to be thinking it right now. Like, oh, they make they remake squirrel like girl. legacy cards. What if Monkey Joe that. gets a legacy card? What if they yeah. made Squirrel Girl legacy card without the Monkey Joe bystander on the card? So sad. That would be so just sad. Like completely crushed. I just want to buff his stats, right? They could buff his stats and because he doesn't have his stats printed anywhere. Yeah. And even if he did, they said they didn't care. Yeah, dude, buff Monkey Joe's stats. Give him the powers of Mjolnir as if he already had Mjolnir. Because that was Monkey Joe's thing, right? He would make him like pick up Mjolnir or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Monkey Joe commenter. Uh, I can't remember Bro, what exactly the stats were every- at, but he, he's picked yeah. up Mjolnir like eight times, I think. And uh, he's KO'd at least like three figures or something. He deserves it. He really does. I don't even know if he plays. I mean, he probably plays. But he comments so much on HC Realms. He's always there. He's got his gimmick. He's got his Monkey Joe gimmick. He's got his little brown text all the time. He's great. He's hilarious. My secondary pick is Bombastic Bagman. If they if they make Bombastic Bagman uh, legacy card, it, it'll skyrocket in value. So anyways, that's legacy cards, guys. Um, so I mean, do you want to kind of go back and forth sort of talking about like what figures we want to see? Uh, first, I'm uh, gonna, get I'm legacy cards. Set. Um, sorry, go for it. So, Morg from the Guardians of the Galaxy set, he's a rare from that set. Um, so just as like a legacy card with the the other ones that we discussed here, um, his original dial and card, uh, he was originally, I don't think his dial changed at all, so I'm not gonna get too much into what his original dial had, but I will say that. Uh, he's he tops out at a 17 defense, and then half of his dial for an eight click long dial, uh, half of his dial is 16s and 15s. So not a stellar dial to be repoint costing. Um, let's see, they added, so they gave him the he's got the execution trait. Which is uh, Morg modifies his attack value plus two when attacking adjacent character with two or more action tokens. Uh, that they updated that to single adjacent character with two action tokens. Uh, he also has the Well of Life trait, which he did not have before, and that is power. Morg, if Morg occupies an opponent's starting area and hasn't been placed this turn, he can be. He can use Steel Energy, Blades Claws Fangs, and Probability Control for the rest of the game, which is a pretty solid power, um, if you can get him to the starting area. So it is a power action. You can't, like, hypersonic all the way there and then activate it or anything like that. But if you can get, like, TK and, like, sidestep somehow or, you know, just, like, through whatever means you can get there and then Steel Energy will mean that you've got a lot more life throughout your dial. He does have the axe swipe power still, and that is, of course, uh, Quake. When he uses Quake and hits, instead of replacing his damage value with a... Or instead of replacing his damage value, roll a d6 and subtract two, minimum two. Each hit character is dealt damage equal to the result. So that's still, like, a pretty solid power in Modern. Um, I can't tell what exactly his cost is. I assume it's still 165 with Power Cosmic. But uh, he won't be, like, the most sought-after thing that I'm going for in this set. Morg is not, like, my favorite character of all time or anything. But he is, like, a really cool <clears throat> rare from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy that'll have a little bit of longevity because of that additional trait, I think. Yeah. 
So that's that's the cool thing about these cards. Like we're probably not, you know, it also gives WizKids an easy out. This is such a great idea. I can see people complaining about it. People complain about everything. But like, this is like, hey, look, I don't want to remake any of those old figures. You know, I don't want to make another Squirrel Girl or somebody, you know, I don't want to fit them into a set. Boom, legacy card. You basically just remade them, you know? Sort of, and like, and some people don't even want remakes. They just want to play the same figures again that are golden. So I, I feel like this is such an awesome, such an awesome idea. I mean, we've, I think we've mentioned this even before. I think you've talked about it. So, like, thanks for stealing an idea, guys. You did good. <laughs> you did good. I really appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, a legacy format. Um, I mean, uh, Magic has a legacy format. There's a lot of like collectible game companies that have legacy formats. It's, a long time due that WizKids included it into Heroclix. Um, it's nice right. that they're finally starting it. They've got a lot of stuff to pull from. Hopefully they pick some of the best stuff. Um, I'd really hate to have to play like some of the, the figures that I hated playing back in the day in legacy format or like pulling like a card Ooh, if for that. Legacy, Mary Marvel card. If you guys make a legacy Mary Marvel card, I will, I will, I will, I will freaking stalk you. I will find out where you live. I will burn your house to That'll the ground. That'll be the one that you pull, Calder. Oh jeez, I'd be, I'd be livid. I would actually be livid. I would rip it up. I would burn it right there. I don't care what it does, what it costs. I would shoot it, burn it, whatever. I would make a video out of it, have a good time. I hate Mary Marvel so freaking much. Oh, I'd be livid. Anyways. But once again, everything about this uh, Future Foundation set, all the stuff they're adding to it, bothers me because this is all stuff I would have killed for them to do in the Captain America set. I would have complained way less. If they would have had Captain and Sidekicks and Captain America, it would have been way more fitting, would have made way more sense, would have been freaking awesome. Uh, same thing, allies, all that jazz. Legacy cards, just like that's just stuff that's cool. And I wish they would have done it for characters I freaking care about. So that being said, uh, let's do a little back and forth talking about our our top picks for legacy cards. My my number 10, this is in no particular order. It sort of is, it sort of isn't. Uh, but Bucky Cap from Fear Itself. Okay. We have not gotten Bucky, Bucky as Captain America since Fear Itself. I still think it's like a relatively solid dial. We just change up what he does a little bit. But yeah, I really want to, uh, you know, James Buchanan Barnes as Captain America. And since we missed that out in the last cap set, might as well just give us a legacy card. <laughs> so that'll be, that'll be my 10 pick, Simeon. Sort of a little back and forth here. I'm going to toss out Mirror Master from the Flash set. Um, mm. So he cost, in the original set, he cost 80 points, and then it was an additional 30 for each uh, other one that you added to the Force. Uh, with characters like Cable, that is like 75 plus 25 for all of his. Uh, it just seems overcosted for what Mirror Master does. So I'd really like to see a version of that that's a little bit cheaper with the same sculpts. I have a bunch of those like generics and it's just, it costs way too much to pay 80 for the original mirror master and then 30 for each additional one. It just seems ridiculous at minimum. You're paying 110. Uh, and then if you want like a decent, like flash versus mirror master kind of matchup, you're paying like, you know, 170 to 200 points for a single quote unquote single figure on the board. Um, so yeah, that'd be a good one that they could redo with the traits and stuff. All right. Uh, next up, I wrote down zombie red skull. He's pretty over costed. Uh, he's 120 points. He's all close. He only has like combat reflexes on his defense and everything. I think he could use, obviously I just want zombies. Literally. If you make any zombie at all, I'm excited. Um, but specifically Red Skull, just because I played him a ton back then, and I would love to just play him more today with the Hydra stuff, you know. So big fan of Zombie Red Skull. He's already got, he's already capped, you know. I don't know if they do many more than three traits, but he's already sort of capped at three traits. But if you want to add something to them, I'd be totally cool. Or just take like 20 points off his point value. Because yeah. um, having cards, a seven, it'll be like the cards yeah. and what the card yeah. says will be like the new dial. So data stats a little bit. Yeah. Take away is you know his high 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 point value for what he does i would love a zombie red skull give him range give him six range he's got a gun he's got a freaking gun he's holding a gun <laughs> literally give him six range but it's a zombie gun All right. how does he know how to use it i know i know i guess all right uh, that's my nine continuing on with squirrel girl and the great lakes avengers 
I'm going to say Captain America uh, 041, Mr. Immortal. So he's got the oh, yeah. dying is what I do best trait. Uh, the Great Lakes Avengers used to be, in my opinion, a com- somewhat uh, formidable team. And uh, Mr. Immortal definitely had a part in that. So instead of being KO'd, um, he was removed from the map. Placed, you placed a special terrain marker in the square that he occupied, and you turned his dial to number nine. And then other characters that uh, they couldn't occupy the special terrain marker at the beginning of your turn, um, you could heal him one damage. So he would go to click nine, and then once he healed to click six, he could potentially come back to the board. And then he had regen on clicks six and f- like through four, so you could regen him back up to a somewhat decent click but he was basically just a way to like deny your opponent winning for quite a while with a great lakes avengers team uh he was a great tie-up piece kind of thing for a while yeah i i thought about putting the great lakes avengers down i was sort of like man great lakes avengers the certain society those are both like keywords i would love to see any uh any cards of but i ended up not doing it i chose pretty specific figures i'm gonna go with the nomad from a number eight he had no traits he had no special powers. Uh, he was like an okay figure, but I would like to see uh, a Nomad Jack Monroe once again. Character that uh, was Bucky at one time and then Nomad by himself. We never got him as Nomad sidekick version of Nomad. We only have him as the Nomad. He's like wandering America, slowly going crazy. So I would like a trait to sort of reflect that uh, for Jack Monroe. And just an updated Nomad would be cool. Maybe even some keywords. I get it. Not giving him keywords. Get it. And he's Nomad, sure. Um yeah, give him some keywords. Yeah, the Vagabond keyword. No mad Vagabond. Sure. Okay. Uh, nope. It's not I'll a get keyword. It. Uh, so, continuing Great Lakes Avengers, Grasshopper. Uh, solid figure. 33 oh, yeah. points at the time from the Deadpool set. Had Leap Climb his whole dial, Close Combat Expert his whole dial. Uh, he had, when Grasshopper is KO'd, if no other friendly characters have been KO'd after action is resolved, you may place him on the map in your starting area on click number one. Pretty solid. Uh, and then he had a special attack power for most of his dial, maximum jump, give Grasshopper a double power action and remove him from the map. At the beginning of your next turn, place him anywhere on the map. Pretty solid. Uh, especially awesome after Wonder Woman when willpower will no longer matter so he can take a double power action without damaging himself um it'll be pretty awesome if we get a legacy card for this guy and we can double jump and land in like our opponent's starting area or something next to somebody and it's not like his dials anything special but having the potential to do a you know 10 for three or an 11 for two or whatever he needs to do uh it's it's a danger anywhere on the board and for his point value He's still a pretty solid character, so I think a legacy card would really do him well. Yeah, dude, absolutely. Um, I always wanted to do the red battery thing because he's placed at the beginning of your turn. Um, but now that poison doesn't work that way anymore uh, at the beginning of your turn, sadly. So I never got to run my, like, 10 or whatever, like, whatever what would it be, seven or six grasshopper red battery team I always wanted Jeez. to run. But it is what it is. I thought it would be funny. Uh, my number seven pick is Captain Iron America. He is bloated in point cost at 175. He does a lot of cool stuff, like being able to sh- shoot while based, and when he uses close combat expert or range combat expert, he can use the next one right after it. Um, but he needs a little something. Maybe uh, reduce his penetrating damage. He has traded in vulnerability, and that's it for like for his defense. He still can be outwitted. He can still be pen blasted. It's really rough. He's not as like cool and tough and good as you want a captain america in iron man armor to be so i think something like reduces penetrating damage or changing the um invulnerability to invincible would really help this captain america captain iron america a lot and i just want to get more use out of captain iron america he's dope he's a dope figure so i'd love i would love to get him a legacy card yeah speaking of bloated uh bloated characters uh my next oh, pick boy. is big bertha uh for 56 points Pretty solid figure. Um, she's got bear hug, special speed power, charge, and plasticity. 
great tie up piece. She's got a uh, shape change for the first two clicks, super strength for the first two clicks. And then she's got the layers of fat defense team ability or defense power team ability. Jeez. I wish it was the team ability. Um, layers of extra fat is when she is dealt damage, roll a D six on a result of one through four. She ignores all but one damage dealt on a result of five or six. She ignores all the damage dealt. I'd like an updated trait or something, uh, make her like 60 points and give her a protected outwit so that her defense power can't just be gotten away with. Or just make her 50 points without the protected outwit. And it's a super solid tie-up piece. Um, you just have to be careful for outwit. Uh, the whole like one damage at a time thing is stuff that we've seen. I don't think that 60 points is like too under costed for that. So if they were going to update it, I mean, even if they were going to give her a legacy dial and just leave it at 56 points, I think they need to give her some sort of protected outwit because I can't imagine paying 56 points for something that could be one shot with like an outwit and four damage. But I mean, it's still a, a really solid piece either way, I guess. All right. Um, if you need to think of more characters besides the Great Lakes Avengers, we can give you a minute. I can talk a little bit more about my guys. If you're like, oh, no, I better I, just keep going through the Great Lakes Avengers. I just Avengers. really want or the Great Lakes Jay Avengers back. <laughs> okay. I've only All got right. one no, more I like before I go to different too. characters, Calder. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, only sorry. one Great Lake uh, Avengers my... left. And don't worry, I'm, my I'm not doing a is... dinosaur. So if that's one oh, of your picks, yeah, you can have it. She's not terrible. Oh, no, don't worry about it. She definitely isn't. Uh, Cap Wolf. I'm going with Cap Wolf. Uh, he's got King of the Werewolves. He's just missing, once again, 100 points. He's just missing a little something to really push him over the edge to make him, like, really good. Uh, maybe some Steel Energy, maybe some Flurry on that dial. You know, um, yeah. So Cap Wolf, dope. Really like him. Really, really want a new version of him. Uh, although I will say, this is kind of the end of my, like, Captain America-related, like, the chases anyways from the actual Captain America set. I didn't choose Regez because as much as I love 1602, I want an entire 1602 set. I don't just want a legacy card for Regez. I would prefer a 1602 set. But as I see, we're not probably going to get a Cap Wolf anytime soon. I wouldn't mind one also updated with the uh, Spider Island keyword because uh, Captain America turned into a werewolf in that storyline as well. So getting Battle World, other Spider Island would be really cool. Uh, so yeah, sure. that's my six. All right. I'm going to go with uh, good old super rare from Captain, or not Captain, Chaos War. I was going to say Ca Captain War. Uh, from the Chaos War, super rare 045, The Void. Uh, so this is the other half of Sentry. Um, I imagine if they made one, they'd have to make both. Uh, Void has a full dial of stealth. Uh, he has the ability to uh, conjoin forces with the Sentry and make... Sentry Void, the 300-point monster kind of dude. Sentry, on the other hand, is a full dial of hypersonic uh, charge. Goes back and forth between the two. Um, perplex and uh, Exploit on Sentry. And then Void has Exploit and Shape Change going back and forth for most of his dial. Um, just a really fun duo fig. Uh, I... I'm not going to say it was fun for the time because it was a 300 point monster at the time, but it's not like, you know, a 300 point figure is going to really do great in now nowadays game. Uh, even if it does have like the multi attack or anything like that, um, it's point values. The Sentry void 300 point figure point value wise isn't amazing. The 11 range is pretty cool, but Still not going to win you any games if that's like your whole force. Uh, there's plenty of better stuff with better stats and better powers nowadays. But uh, yeah, just a really cool set of figures. And I really like them like on the shelf. So um, getting legacy cards would be that much sweeter to have those two. Oh man, you really want to give people like PTSD, don't you? Yeah. With that, that set. Void pick. Yeah, Yikes, come at man. my Sentry Void uh, with your entire team of bystanders and see how it works out. Uh, I know my list has been really Captain America themed and heavy, so I knew I needed to put some DC on it. Although I couldn't think of a single Lex Luthor I wanted to put on here. Since the Subterfuge Lex Luthor 
only really shines with ID cards. And I honestly uh, didn't like the fact that I even like played him like that. I want to stay away from ID cards as much as I can. And I don't want them to make any more. And I assume they won't because they early retired them. Um, I didn't put any Lex Luthers on this list, but I did, however, wanted to make sure I put at least one DC person on this list. And who better than the best Green Lantern, Guy Gardner, specifically the War of Light Guy Gardner. So this goes into hoping that they do legacy cards for Wonder Woman 80th anniversary and that they do a legacy. Uh, I'm going to do the LE Guy Gardner specifically here and that maybe the constructs that come as objects with the characters in that set can also be used as constructs for the old uh, War of Light uh, characters. So I would really like the Green Lantern Guy Gardner. He was cool, especially with the change to pushing and willpower. He's even better. He had a great full speed charge um, in a way that if you landed next to an opposing character, you get Battle Fury until he killed them. You know, I love putting him whatever it would be as if he didn't even move or whatever. So he could then do a power action, close combat expert and just boom clock people. And I love doing that with that guy Gardner. And I'd love to do it again since we got kind of a, in a solid, trust me, a solid guy Gardner with that same sculpt. But uh, he doesn't just, he doesn't feel the same as uh, this one, especially with that sidestep. Want to grab a couple brewskis. So war light guy Gardner is going to be my, my five pick. Wow. So, so, so speaking of, uh, you know, best green lanterns uh one of my picks is the teen titans 049 bunker uh not a green lantern by name but clearly a proficient user in the acts of burying and uh everything green lantern ish uh so his whole thing was his trait psionic constructs was Terrain markers placed by bear or by bunker are not removed until they are destroyed or until bunker uses a power that places that type of terrain marker on the map. So he could use barrier, incapacitate, and quake as his attack power lower dial. Uh, top dial he had force blast, smoke cloud, and barrier and toughness. So once he placed his barrier markers, they just stayed until he did it again. Pretty solid little character. Um, I played him in Thursday Throwdown. Pretty sure I lost with him, but it was still like Times, MVP but he was of the team. Annoying. Yeah, yeah, oh, he was annoying. He was awful. And even though he he has purple constructs, he was clearly a clearly a uh, much better version of any Green Lantern that's ever been. Um, I don't think there's any been been any green lantern that could place a barrier that didn't go away at the end of the turn so uh, oh, i think man. he's he's at least you know the top tier green lantern okay right on uh my number four pick is zombie super scroll i would like any and or all of the chase zombies specifically the ones with the brown bases to be made but zombie super scroll i think it would just be a really expensive card i would love to be able to play him in modern because i never got to play him in modern when he was modern, uh, I didn't have the cash, cash dollar y'alls, the dem, dem dollar bills uh, to afford to play him. And now that I already have one, all I would have to do is get a hold of this card. Hopefully, makes him a little bit better. Maybe I don't know. A little, a little protected outwit action going on would be pretty cool. A little protected pulse wave, protected outwit would be pretty solid. I'd be a big fan of that. Um, yeah. So I would totally be down for a zombie super scroll legacy card. Especially with the change to willpower slash pushing again, because uh, he does not have indomitable on his dial, and I hated having to choose willpower as one of my uh, my powers to choose with him. So zombie super scroll would be great. Yeah, I would love to see him. Definitely uh, love a legacy card. Speaking of changes powers, this character I have here has the minions of doom power, which is updated and uh, definitely benefits her in the update. So it now heals one. Uh, Heals one click after KOing an opposing character. From Chaos War 049, the Morgan Le Fay that spits out the little demons. Uh, starts with phasing with Psychic Blast and the Astral Form Fade defense power. Uh, can use Toughness at the beginning of your turn. Choose either Combat Reflexes or Energy Shield Deflection. Morgan Le Fay can use that power till the end of your turn. Means top dial, she's either a 19... Uh, for close or range pretty solid with a uh, shape change lower dial 
Uh, her stats don't really stack up too well, but it's not like the worst thing in the world. And then, of course, she does have the, the little demons that like pop out and uh, can help you out a little bit there. But uh, yeah, I I just really like the three D uh, aspect, I guess, of the characters. And, yeah, she looks uh, cool. Yeah. I think Morgan Le Fay needs a, a secondary option if they gave her like Battle World Weird World and gave her the Weird World trait. That'd be pretty yeah. solid. She could play this one with the uh, Queen Le Fay one or, you know, the man things or whatever. That'd be pretty solid. Uh, she has the perplex, but only to target characters, the Avengers keyword. So that's already halfway there. Already living on a prayer. Yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, geez. All right. Uh, my top three. These guys are actually definitely probably in my actual like top three who I 100% would want to get legacy cards. And uh, they're not even all real name Steve Rogers, which is probably surprises uh, some people, at least a little bit, I imagine. Uh, this, this number three is going to have to be the Hammer of Thor, Captain America, uh, stand out when people talk about just one of the best Captain Americas ever made of all time. Uh, this Hammer Thor Captain America defined a meta, defined an era, and defined Captain America and what it meant to throw that shield through literally everything but walls and indoor blocking. So <laughs> he was outside, he could throw it through a freaking skyscraper, but he couldn't throw it through a wall if he was on the inside. It's awesome. Uh, shield trajectory made it, you know, I know what they're going for. Maybe it sort of bounces around, whatever. But what it was, was I toss my shield through literally anything and it cuts through reality, hits you and comes back. That's how it felt playing this Captain America. And it's freaking awesome. Honestly, I don't even know what to give him. Traded toughness, sidestep, maybe. He's not great with, like, defensively. He's only 72 points. He's still amazingly point-costed nowadays. You could, like, all he has is that special attack shield uh, trajectory, shield uh, reflection, deflection trajectory, I believe is what it's called, uh, power. So he's got no reducers. You know, he's got ESD top dial. He's got some leadership. You could give him, you know, a little fluff, some, like, fluff traits, maybe something cool to do with the Avengers keyword. I don't know. Um, but just, dude, just make him modern. Guys, I'm begging you. It's an amazing sculpt. It's an awesome figure. Yo, make it modern. It would be so dope. It would be so dope. Yeah. I would glad. I would gladly pay $100 for that card, that legacy card, whenever it comes out. <laughs> you know, it would be Either an amazing way. card. Even more amazing than this, Calder. Legacy mm. number 301 in a set. Can you imagine what character this could be? No idea. 301. I'll tell you what set it's from. It's from uh, Fear Itself. Are you oh, yeah. on a, is this, is this Scotty? Split no, lip? no, no. This is a Split Lip. So for 20 points, good old Split Lip, he says, I'll forge your weapon for you. Uh, friendly characters can use free actions instead of power actions to make a relic roll and modify their roll by plus one if not already modified to this effect. Instead, if they changed that to friendly characters can use oh, no. free actions oh, instead no. of power actions to equip objects and then uh, maybe gave him like sidestep kept his enhancement for 20 points good old split lips back in the game he's not equipping people like he used to but he's still doing it just as well uh, that would be insane free action equip that the awk arms thank you Free action oh, exospecs, don't mind if I do. Free action, I've got an infinity gauntlet. Oh boy, can't wait to do some jazz hands and snaps. Goodness gracious. It's good old split lip. Split lip would be kind of insane. Would be. be great. I, I think it'd be uh, funny, uh, if wow. nothing else. Like, keep his like uh, values the same because he's completely trash outside of the one thing he does, but... I mean, what did you need him to do? What did you need him to do other than the the entire Ooh. relic roll thing? Yeah. Oh, that's insane. 
Uh, my number two pick is going to be the comedian. Uh, any version of the comedian is cool. I imagine when they say they're going to change symbols. They'll probably still make figures that have the sharpshooter symbol, but since it's a retired symbol, they're probably going to make it, uh, you know, uh, just some improved movement slash, you know, improved targeting, I guess, double circle arrow, you know. So they should make the comedian. I would love any of the Watchmen cards to be made. We had someone uh, talk about that on Facebook. It would be next level, super cool and awesome. So any comedian, honestly, any of the Watchmen, just to be able to like bust them out and play them now that I've got the full set, you know, that would be sweet. So next, uh, maybe not Wonder Woman, a couple of DC sets from now, we do a little funky universe, do a little uh, whatever it's called, the button storyline. I don't even remember what it's freaking called. It was trash and it was terrible. But uh, yeah, do that. Like the, uh, the doomsday clock or something. I don't know. Yeah, there you go. Doomsday clock. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, right. My number two pick is from the Justice League Trinity War. So uh, this guy would have to have a little bit of work done. Um, maybe halving his point cost. 210 points. The super rare Mazaz. So this is Shazam said backwards. TM. Uh, so it's uh, Shazam. Uh, it's TM's Shazam, I guess, uh, backwards. MT Shazam. Uh, this guy's awesome because when he KOs an opposing character, just like uh, the there's the Marvel version with Regent, uh, who has like Regency, and when he KOs the character, he can steal their powers for that game. Uh, Mazaz could do the same, which was awesome on paper, but when he's two thirds your build, over two thirds your build, he really didn't pull his weight as much as I would like. Um, I think for I don't know, I'm not gonna point cost it for him, but I'm gonna say like 120 points and the same exact dial, he would probably see a little bit of play. I still don't think he's seen like, you know, he's not like breaking any like records or anything. But if I can hypersonic and punch something for five and uh, steal, it's like shape change. Maybe I'm playing it. Uh, he had a special attack power that gave him pulse wave, but it was only for four clicks in the middle of his dial. And one of those clicks, he couldn't even use it really. Um, when he did use it after actions resolved, each opposing character hit by the attack had to choose a power it possessed. And then... Uh, all other powers on the character's dial were countered. So it's kind of like a unique, like, do you want to have your charge uh, blades or do you want to have your, like, invulnerability or whatever? Um, you didn't, you only got to pick one. So it was a neat, like, little pulse wave that never really got popped off whenever I played him. It was either he stayed top dial or he died really quick. But uh, I'd like to see an updated point cost for him and see him back in modern. He's a really fun piece. Okay, right on. Uh, and then my number one pick, which should come as a surprise to no one, is going to have to be from the Supernova set, Colonel America. Uh, yeah, dude. Give him, uh, with all these old zombies, give him the new zombies traits. You know, give him maybe some traded toughness, a little little something. Give him some more love on their combat values. Uh just buff them up, man. Buff them up. Uh, these old zombies, they're still fun. I want to play them. These are the zombies that are actually the main characters in the Marvel zombie storyline. You know, Colonel America, Hulk, Wolverine, Spider-Man, you know, Iron Man, all those guys. They still never made a Luke Cage. You know, they still never made like a lot of figures. So I would love, 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 love and updated uh, zombie cards. Those would be amazing. Once again, I would gladly pay $100 for a Colonel America zombie card, a uh, legacy card. <laughs> Here's hoping I pull one. Uh, my my uh, number awful. one slot. This could be a kind of a weird, but I'll I'll explain it. Anyone that hasn't been listening for a while might not understand why this is my pick. It is the from the Superman Wonder Woman set. This is a chase green light. So green light does a bunch of stuff. For 90 points, the main thing that he does is friendly characters 40 points or less can use toughness and the flight ability. I really liked this guy because he could turn your swarm team into a swarm team that can reduce, you know, at least one damage. And they can get around, like, you know, if you've got a bunch of rock trolls or you've got a bunch of, like, Oni Hulks or Punisher Squad or 
any kind of generic dude that can't normally fly, this guy could turn them all into flyers and they could get around the board pretty easily. That was pretty awesome. Um, I would like them to update this dude with the Green Lantern team ability so that he could carry eight while he moved. Uh, and then like something like he can carry when using like that team ability he can carry flyers because obviously his trait is geared towards generics so it would be silly if he couldn't carry his own like teammates um he's got some other uh cool powers he's got the box within a box within an infinite number of boxes so that's the whole barrier when he does use it instead of placing markers normally you can choose a single base opposing character within range and line of fire and place blocking terrain markers in each unoccupied square adjacent to the character that character gains earthbound neutralize until your next turn at the beginning of your next turn before removing the markers give the chosen character an action token if it's adjacent to at least three of these markers that was like a pretty fun little attack power mid dial uh, it'd be cool if that was just traded instead. Um, that should be something that he could do his entire dial, whether it's barrier or the special barrier. Either way, he should be able to do that his whole dial. And then survived four years as a communist POW. When this click is revealed due to taking damage from an opposing character's attack, stop turning the dial. Green light can use super senses. When he does and succeeds, you may heal him of one damage. I'd like them to do a little bit more flavor with that as well. Um, on its surface, it's just a stop click that grants super senses. And then similar to Proteus, he can heal off of it. Uh, it'd be cooler if like he had actual stuff going on on that click rather than just that. Um, he wasn't like the biggest thing in the comic books, but the whole, like the main thing was the whole empower a brigade having an entire like a uh, team of, green lanterns with him kind of thing like pseudo green lanterns fake green lanterns with him that can all fly and use toughness it'd be cool if yeah, like they could cool. use whatever power he had on like his like first click especially if they have to be uh 40 points or less and they're not like being carried by him some sort of work around could be worked whether he can carry his opponents or he can carry his friendlies or he can uh, give him like some sort of boost, whatever it is. I think it'd be cool to see him back in play. And now a Jedi Legend Hero Clicks tip of the week. You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. It worked out really well. He had two tips, so we had two episodes, so it worked really well. So he said, You and your opponents are both playing Mr. Oz, and one of you uses TK. The special triggers at the same time for both. So how do you decide? So the special is whenever someone is placed by a TK, you may place that character in two squares and line of fire of their current square. He said it's simple. The active player chooses who would go first. So anytime there's an effect that happens at the same time where both like players can do it at the same time, it's always the active player decides. So that's a very big thing to understand. It's not super obvious in the rules. And I'm glad this is a very solid tip of the week to do. Yeah, there's enough uh, like after actions resolved effects where stuff like that can happen. Um, and yeah, like being the active player often gives you the advantage of being like, well, you can resolve your effect and then I will re- resolve mine. Uh, also works with like prob and dice manipulation because all probs have to be resolved before you can use like a Q die manipulation kind of thing. So you have to check with your opponent and be like, is that your final roll? Because I might decide to like, swap out one of those dice for this die and uh yeah it's kind of the same thing yeah dude awesome and then that is going to uh complete our each of our lists for our legacy like cars we would like to see let us know guys what legacy cards you guys would like to see uh comment section of this youtube video and or uh email at us email us at dial h for hero clicks all spelled out uh, at gmail.com and let us know we did get a couple emails uh once again uh from the guy that wrote us last week uh i'm gonna sit down there weren't really more questions for the show really just sort of talking about how uh the tiers and everything went for keywords etc uh, if i played at a venue that would let me use those rules for tiers and stuff i would totally put a list together but i know i just know it's not gonna happen at all so i could shoot the idea to them uh, but we'll see. Uh, anyways, 
Uh, I still do. I think it's cool. It's like sort of make the tier list and what you had in mind. I need to shoot you back an email. I'm so bad at getting back to emails. I just check them on my phone. You don't sit down and write them. So I'll make sure we get it back to you. But yeah, uh, email, email us, guys, anything you want. Uh, Malcolm, uh, we didn't say it last episode. Uh, Thursday throwdown questions are all very related to being over. It's not over just yet. So we're going to hold off on those questions for quite a while until Thursday Throwdown is totally completed. Uh, speaking of Thursday Throwdown, guys, check out our YouTube channel. If you want to check out crazy cool gameplay like our wrestling video, our Hot Ones video, our hilarious skits, I must say. Uh, check those out. Dial H for Hero Clicks on YouTube. Um, vote for our Thursday Throwdown figures on the comment section of the last video, on uh, Facebook, Discord, and Twitter. The uh, next set is going to be Lord of the Rings versus Halo. First Lord of the Rings set versus, uh, you know, the only Halo set. So definitely go vote for that, guys. And check us out. Leave a review of the podcast if you liked the show. And let's be real. I mean, if you're listening, you probably you enjoy it slightly. Don't lie to yourself. You enjoy it slightly. Uh, you can leave a listener review uh, just like Mr. Count Dabs a lot left us. He said, good show. Better than Click Stuff. I'll agree with him. He said, Ranch Boy is cool, but Natter Day Hippie is less than enthusiastic. Fans are genuinely cooler than the Bun Boy. Hashtag huh. bring back Drew. Hashtag Chris Crew. Yeah. So if you no want to leave a uh, listener, could be, but uh, I feel like uh, I feel personally attacked by whoever this listener could possibly be. Yeah. No idea. No idea. So you guys can leave us any kind of uh, any kind of review. Uh, you want to enjoy the show give it leave it five stars helps other people see the show so it's really huge and helps us out a lot that's all i've got to say oh and sorry if you want to support us you can do so at patreon.com we do giveaways we do tokens uh depending on what tier you get we use stickers all sorts of fun stuff or if you just want to toss a dollar our way for enjoying the show hey that's 25 cents a podcast each week with youtube on top of it for free so uh you support us we we put a lot into our content we try to be very different uh from other youtubers we just try to make really funny stuff content we think people will enjoy content that we enjoy making not stuff that we think is going to be just purely clickbait or whatever we just we make the content that we want to make because we think it's going to be fun and that's what this game's all about so yeah support us on patreon if you guys want to now i'm totally done for sure all right and with that Thank you for listening to Dial H. We are sponsored by CoolStuffInc.com. What's that? A website? It's www.CoolStuff.com. Inc.com. Yes, that's how websites work. The whole word. In a browser, you hit all the letters in sequence and then enter, and it takes you to the page. It's a very interesting new system that we have developed called the Internet. Uh, if you go there, you can find cool stuff in stock from the latest Heroclix singles and sealed products. So you should check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. All right. Happy trails. <laughs> I know how websites work, Calder. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's pretty it's pretty awful. You did it last time and here we are. <laughs>